I got a job there and within uh, eight months, I was actually a supervisor, a salaried supervisor. I had applied and bid for that job. They gave me an interview and I was point blank with them about my record. They knew who I was and they appreciated my candidness and they could tell that I had changed as a person because of what my demeanor and what my presence brought. And that was a huge confidence boost. And it was at that moment that I realized I don't give two shits about my past. Like my past is something that happened to me, wouldn't trade it for the world, defined who I am today. And you know what, instead of hiding that, I'm going to elevate that because again, like that's my story. You know, I came back from that. Everybody loves a comeback story, you know? And that's what I told myself in my head. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do every opportunity I possibly can. And life has only been up since there. It, and the correlation between your self image and everyday life is huge. And I love how you're able to just completely embody your past rather than in, <clears throat> there's a difference between running from your past and accepting that it's occurred and now it's you have stacked the lessons you've learned so much from the person you used to be and now where you're at today it's like a complete 180 so that kind of makes me curious what was a few of the beginning changes that you had to implement because i know going from that person who you used to be to trying to make a change that's probably the hardest part and once you get running you talk about compounding you you're probably on a streak right now of momentum but at that first that turning point what what was that like the turning point when like i got out of rehab and restarted my life that point <clears throat> yeah oh yeah man just like you said it compounds for sure you know it takes a little bit of time and it, it's not a linear graph you know, it is, it's a lot of ups, a lot of downs, and sometimes you have a really good streak and sometimes you have a really bad streak, like shit just happens. It's just rolling with the punches. You know, I handled a lot of situations these past few years very poorly, and I'm better now before, because of them, because I've realized a lot, but, you know, building your confidence back in anything, whatever happens to you in life, say you have no confidence at all. You know, a problem with me is I've always suffered with needing instant gratification which kind of led me to drug addiction and you know abusing drugs and alcohol because i love the instant gratification and that's what uh drifted me towards harder drugs because the instant gratification was faster so to realize and get out of rehab and realize all right alex you better humble yourself because now you're working a job for 750 you know and you're putting a label on yourself like this and then with each job the momentum grew you know, my confidence grew a little more. Now, again, I don't have the greatest confidence at this time because I'm freaking 26 and I lived on my own for six or seven years. And now I had to move back with my parents and that wasn't enjoyable, you know, living back at home when you're 26 and like all these things that happened and all this adversity. And <laughs> it's really hard to go through sometimes. And again, I really had to humble myself. There's a lot of times, you know, my dad would yell at me for freaking leaving the light on. I'm like, I'm 27 freaking years old, man. You're going to yell at me for leaving a light on. But then I had to be like, you know what? This isn't my freaking house. You know what I mean? It's, I don't pay the bills. I don't do anything. I'm just living here. So I better be respectful of that. So I'm glad I was because it takes a long time. It takes a long time. And that's what turns a lot of people off to real serious change in their life because it doesn't happen overnight. You have to put the footwork in. Like these past four and a half years of me getting out of rehab, like my life has been a 180. I'm a completely different person. People I used to serve at the other bar I used to work at see me five, six years later now. And they're like, wow, you're unrecognizable because I have muscles now and I'm not like some scrawny little drug addict. You know what I mean? They're like, you changed. I'm like, yeah, I freaking hope so. The person I was before sucked, you know? So it's like, what the hell? But what yeah. comes along with that is like, you don't relate to, a, uh, I mean, me, I don't relate to a majority of the people I used to hang out with. And that includes the friends I grew up with who I was best friends with for 10 years. You know, we are just on two different levels of life. You know, I work at a bar in the middle of town. I see my buddies come in there sometimes. We're freaking 10 years ago, we were going to the bars, bar hopping. I'm done. They're still doing the same thing. And it really opens my eyes. It's like, wow. And I don't say it to them because it's not my place. It's like, wow, you're still in that same cycle of like Monday through Friday sucks ass. But guess what? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we drink. Monday, we do it all over again. So it's just like, no, no, thank you. That lifestyle is 
completely toxic. It's, mm. it's what I refer to as autopilot where the, it's cool. You're making money. You, you think you're living a good life, but you're squandering your potential to be someone of influence to like you're what you've done is you went through a rough past and now you're able to completely educate so many people on your past experiences and how they can become better and if i'm sure there's many who admire you whether it's for the mindset you have or the body that you've built like good things take time it's one of my favorite quotes and i think one of the the cornerstones to working on yourself is just having more of a longer term vision rather than a two week instant gratification vision the once we can get away from instant gratification i really think that's one of the most harmful things for human beings whether i don't know if you've heard of the idea of dopamine detox i just looked into it recently did it, did it this weekend and and it makes such a difference if you you become aware of how the scrolling and the the artificial dopamine affects your motivation i always say that motivation is bullshit but now i'm realizing actually motivation is completely real but you have to learn how to cultivate it and protect your motivation rather than if you're you you fry your dopamine receptors with anything instant if it's porn if it's drugs if it's um too much social media constant likes constant follows it's not the same thing as going for a five mile run or doing an hour of a weightlifting session like once we learn to delay gratification it, it's not easy but anything worth having isn't easy and it, it's the, the beauty in perseverance and <clears throat> knowing what you went through to get to where you are now makes it so much better like i'm 100 sure you, you wouldn't redo your past because your past is just full of lessons yeah and that don't mean uh that dopamine what'd you just call it i had a brain fart dopamine uh, dopamine detox dopamine detox i suppose i did that this weekend uh thursday to sunday i was camping all weekend 72 hours no cell phone all i had was my girlfriend my dog and a few books and that's what i did and i'll tell you what and i i went down we stayed at actually it's like a national park slash dam so we walked down to the dam you know i sat there by the river stared at the trees we went on a lot of walks we did a lot of outdoor activities all weekend dude and i'll tell you what it was absolutely amazing yeah the first night sucked without my phone i'm not even gonna lie like it was unenjoyable it's like oh shit, i have no service out here i can't surf twitter or, like mindlessly scroll or do it check my email like do these dumb tedious things and then after the second day i'm like wow i really like not having my phone and i remember getting back sunday evening and i could barely bring myself to like like look at any of my notifications like i just didn't want to i'm like screw this phone and that's how i've been all week you know like i'm still on it and i time block times to get on it but like it's just like once you realize what it's like the day or two after you quit like social media or your phone for a few days and then you're like wow this is what life is like i didn't realize how much of my life was getting censored by this dopamine that i was getting hijacked by mindlessly scrolling i had to delete TikTok a few weeks ago man because like initially i was going to start posting videos on TikTok, and then i didn't i found myself like literally i'd watch i'm like ah, i'm gonna watch five minutes of TikTok. well five minutes turned into an hour and then an hour turned into two hours dude it sucks you in so hard and i finally said like i'm getting zero value out of this like it's literally just robbing me in my time it's insane and I am inspired by your 72 hour detox that I, that is something I need to do. And the idea of time blocks, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't even give myself five minutes on TikTok. There's certain mm -hmm. things that after you do it once or twice, you say never again. And yeah. that's where I'm at with certain apps. And see, mm -hmm. Twitter is, is beautiful at the same time because you are getting good information, but you have to recognize the potential time sink that it yeah. is. And mm -hmm. 
just like you said, getting in nature, unplugging, that is what we're meant to do. We are yeah. spiritual beings and human bodies. We're not yeah. these artificial robots. And mm -hmm. it's just a, we live at such a opportunity filled time. The idea that we can speak right now, have a beautiful mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. Technology is a blessing, Amazing. but it, it, we have to be the users of technology rather than allowing it to use mm -hmm. and control us. It, 